Yeah. Fruit. 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 Welcome, Crave. Uh, week three of our series, Fruit, where we are talking about the fruits of the Spirit. I have a very special guest here with me today, Steve Caswell, LCSW, that stands for Licensed Clinical Social Worker. And before you ask, no, we're not related, it's just a coincidence. Okay, all right, you got me. No, this is my dad. Um, he's been counseling now for, what, about... 150 years, something like that? Yeah, about. Yeah, close close to that anyway. Well, today we get the very fun topic as we continue in our Fruits of the Spirit series, talking about patience or long-suffering. That's the old, old form of the word. It sounds a lot rougher. And what I like to call peace, part two. Uh, we talked about inner peace and peace with God last week, and now we're going to be talking about peace with others. So, um, as we read here in our now familiar passage that we've had for the past couple weeks, Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is peace and patience. So that's the scriptural basis for what we're going to be talking about. Now, as we've said before in this series, and, and Hannah led off with this at the very beginning, it's important to keep in mind that everything we talk about in this series doesn't come from our own efforts. These things are called fruits of the Spirit for a reason. They grow, they're produced, they're not achieved, or they're not the action themselves, okay? So keep that in mind. But before we dive in, before I, I, I start asking him some questions here, I just want to give us a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about, okay, to lay in uh, some foundation here for peace and patience. So we covered peace, internal peace, peace with God previously, but peace as a fruit of the Spirit is more than just that. Peace is also peace with others, peace with relationships, because God wants us to be in harmony with other believers, frankly. Um, literally a good chunk of the New Testament, the, the right side of your Bible, as Pastor Epi likes to say, has Paul and Peter mostly dedicated to just talking about this. Christians not being at war with each other, to love and support each other. Uh, in fact, there's a great verse right here in Colossians that I have in front of me, 3, 12 through 13. So as those who have been chosen of God, that's all of us who are Christians, who, who believe that Jesus died and rose again for us, Holy and beloved, put on a heart of patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. But as Christians, we're also to live this peace out in the world with the rest of the world, not just fellow believers, to be at peace with them too. Romans 12, 18, if possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Hebrews 12, 14, pursue peace with all men and the sanctification without which no one will see the Lord. So the reason that we're putting these two together is because peace with others also requires a lot of patience with others. I think you, you would agree with that. And while we'll touch on patience in general, kind of the overarching thing of what patience is, what that fruit looks like, or long-suffering, as, as the old phrase is, like I said, most of us really need the fruit of patience in our interactions with others first and foremost. And again, the reasons why are that we as believers are called to live the way God wants us to, and as a family. And that means living at peace with each other, with your fellow believers, not getting angry at them, not blowing up at them, fighting with them, but instead being at peace, in harmony with them. But then there's the other reason, which we touched on in Hebrews and Romans there, and that is we are to show God's love and example to the rest of the world. Why would others want to know Jesus if they see us as Christians getting mad and, and yelling at people for doing things that upset us or constantly arguing with, with everybody like everybody else seems to? We're called to be pretty extreme, Crave. And that means that God wants us to be at peace even with people we would have good reason to be mad at or to be impatient with. And the ultimate goal of why God wants us to do that is because we want others to see that peace, to see that love, and wonder why we have it so that they can come and they can know Jesus, so they can know God just like we can. So let's get into this. So he's been counseling for a long time. He's dealt with a lot of different relationships. He understands a lot of interpersonal relationships here. And uh, so I think he has some really good wisdom. So really listen up here. Um, so, Pops, what exactly does peace with others 
look like? What does that mean? Well, first of all, peace is uh, it's a state of mind. I mean, it's very important to understand. Peace comes from recognizing that you have a wholeness or a completeness within you. And that's in Christ. He's given you everything that you need mm. to be at peace. I believe peace is our natural state, mm. but it's our own limiting beliefs and limiting behaviors that steals our peace. And so, you know, the opposite of peace is really anxiety, mm. okay? And you can't be at peace with others if you're not at peace with yourself. So what I tell people that are having anxiety issues is you have to think about the way to think. Mm. T-H-E, mm. the way to think, okay? And the T stands for what's true, the H, what's happy, the E, what's effective, okay? So if we look at this from something like test anxiety, okay, you have a test at school and you're feeling anxious about it. What's true? Well, you know, you have a test, okay? What is happy about that? Well, your early warning system is working because, you know, you're feeling anxious, all right? And that's, that's all feelings are, is signals. You know, if you do this, hey, you know, what does that mean? I have the answer. Call on me. If you do this, shh, be quiet, all right? Feelings are the same thing. They're just signals. They just tell us what's going on and alert us to what we need to do. So then, so if the happy thing is your early warning system's working, the effective thing is, hey, maybe I should study. Maybe I should, you know, prepare. Okay, now how does that work with others? Now in my day we'd say, well, you know, someone's bad mouthing you. Hmm. Now, I don't know what they say today. You know, it, it'd be, you know, talking smack or dissing you. Now that's from the 90s. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that was I, my generation. I'm an old guy, so <laughs> whatever they say these days, when someone's talking bad about you, all right, what, what's true, what's happy, what's effective? Well, the truth is, we don't know if they said it or not, okay? Hmm. And, and that's important to recognize. To be at peace with everyone is to, to not jump to conclusions or make assumptions about anything, all right? And what's happy about that or positive is if they're talking about me, that means my life is way more interesting than theirs, okay? <laughs> and, and so I'm thinking, you know, if my life is more interesting than theirs, what's effective for me to think about? I need to not give them much time and I need to think about how to live a more interesting life. Because, you know what? Me living my best life is really what my job is in this world, to follow after God, to do the things he has for me to do, irregardless of what other people think, because Jesus himself said, hey, they're going to badmouth you, diss you, you know, talk smack about you because of me. Yep. And yep. if you're living for Christ, you know, people are going to be offended because, quite frankly, Jesus is offensive. Mm. He says things that don't go along with our common contemporary culture, mm. okay? And so, you know, those are, those are one of the things that I'd say is, you know, the way to think. The other thing is, if we seek first to understand rather than worrying about being understood, okay? Most arguments, most disagreements, most strife happens where people often are saying the same thing and they're not understanding what the other person's saying. And so what I, I try and teach people is, well, and here's something, 99% of adults don't know. Okay, so for, for you young people, to want to know something that 99% of the adults in the world don't know, listen carefully. And this is about how to listen. Mm. There's three levels of listening. Now, the first level is listening to respond. So if we meet at a party and you're talking, I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm not really listening. I'm listening just enough to hear something that I can play off of, or maybe to tell a story off of your story, so you'll think I'm cool and like me. That's listening to respond. And there's nothing wrong with listening to respond, but using it 100% of the time isn't a good idea, okay? I mean, if you're out to eat, hey, you know, What's the specials for today? If you're traveling, hey, what flight, what gate, what time? That's all important stuff. But listening to respond is very limited, and that's what most people do all the time. The next level of listening, level two, is listening to hear and understand. Mm. Okay, this is where you really need to work at really listening to hear what the other person's saying. 
okay? And to do that, it's a very active process. We call it active listening, okay? And active listening isn't, isn't like passive listening, where you're like, yeah, you know, no, I hear you, I hear you. Or, you know, these days, it, it might be more like this, you know? It's like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Oh, no, go, go ahead, I'm, I'm listening, all right? To actively listen, first of all, you need to make eye contact, all right? So you shut this thing off, you turn it off, or you just get rid of it, okay? Because that's really a problem. I mean, we've been studying this as psychologists now for quite a few years, and it's actually dubbed the iPhone effect. If an iPhone is sitting out between you talking, it just destroys the level of conversation because I can be interrupted by something infinitely more important than this conversation at any moment. There you go, Andrew users. There's, a, there's some points against the iPhone there. But. <laughs> so, but to really actively listening, you want to make eye contact, and you want to be actively engaged and talking to the person, sure, sure. all right? But what you're talking, what you're speaking on, is simply questions asking for greater clarity or pushing them to keep going. So it might look like, okay, so is this what you're saying? No, that's not it. Okay, can you tell me another way? Okay, I think I got it. What else? Hmm, yeah, that's good. Can you tell me more? That's the active listening part, and that's what helps you really understand. You have to listen to someone all the way through. The, the other thing with that, um, besides actively listening then, and level two listening, is level three listening. And level three listening is listening to hear the heart. Ooh. Okay, so level two listening is listening to hear the content. Sure. Level three is to hear the context. What are they saying between the lines? What's going on in their heart? What's behind what they're saying? And that's a little bit more difficult. And, and that's where you can you know, ask questions again. Hey, does it sound like, I was coaching someone one time and I said, hey, it sounds like you're in a hole and you can look up and see the light, but you can't get out. And he said, no, Steve, it's worse than that. It's like I'm in a plexiglass closet and everything's right by me and I can't touch it. Mm. And so our conversation went way deeper at that point because I was trying to hear the heart. And so even if you make a mistake, if you're trying, people will help you out. And so really listening to understand and listening to hear the heart are, are a tremendous gift to give to anyone because frankly, in this world, who listens on that level to you most of the time. Right. You know, very few people listen on that level. And so it's a tremendous gift to give to people. And it's a way to really foster peace in your relationships. Because if you're hearing the heart, if you're hearing what people are saying, and you're understanding it, odds are there's going to be a lot less misunderstanding and a lot more just figuring out where they're coming from and why they're saying what they're saying. Mm. That's good. That's good. Crave, I hope you were listening to that, uh, at least on the second level there. But, you know, that actually brings me up to something. Um, just really want to touch on it quick. We've been talking about the good fruit and the bad fruit. And the bad fruit of peace, and really patience in this as well, because they, they link together, is something we call strife. Now, strife is something that it's kind of defined as like a heated conflict or, or a, a violent disagreement is how it's often defined. And one of the big places we see this in our culture, I, I hate to say it really, it's an overused term, but is the cancel culture kind of movement. Regardless of your beliefs, we see that all across the board. And that's not biblical. That's not from the word. And those three things that, that Pops was just talking about there, um, particularly those last two, active listening and listening for the heart, goes a long way to really understanding and avoiding that strife, that bad fruit, that fruit of the flesh, okay? So keep that in mind that you can apply this not just in your person uh, when you're talking face-to-face -face with someone, but also online and think about that before you jump to conclusions. Jumping to conclusions, I think, is kind of one of the worst things to do and, and really shows that you're not engaging with that listening and you're not really seeking the peace that God wants us to have mm -hmm. with others. So one of the big things with this though, and this is where we kind of get into some more of the meat, it's really hard to listen to people. I, I think, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be in a job if it, if, if it wasn't for that case. So it takes a lot of patience 
to be able to listen to people. Patience is being willing to deal with difficult people without losing your cool, without getting upset at them or, or waiting for them to, to learn or, or realize something. To again use cancel culture as an example, people are not patient with someone who's about to be canceled. They jump to those conclusions, right? They immediately attack that person and, and freaking out at their failures and everything like that. So patience with others is also really really important. So what can we can we look at that a little bit? What is exactly what exactly does patience with others look like? Well, first of all, patience equals maturity. All right? The more mature you are, the more patient you can be. Because the the, the Greek word for patience in in the Galatians passage references two other words, long and passion. And so what it's saying is you know, those who can withhold from indulging their passions for a long time are demonstrating patience. And so the idea of being short-tempered versus being long-tempered, all right? You've never heard of anyone who's long-tempered, have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that's what we're to strive to be as believers, to be long-tempered, to be long-suffering, as it says in the King James. Mm. And, you know, the idea of, of long-suffering is a great concept because it really is just, it's maturing of the person, but it's more maturing of the faith to recognize, you know, we're in this to play the long game, all right? And the long game is a term that, that basically means, hey, you can, you can play the short game, which is winning the battle and losing the war, hmm. or you can go for the long game, and that means sometimes we're gonna lose some battles to win the bigger war. You know, we had a phrase growing up that says, hey, I will do today what others won't, so I can do tomorrow what others can't. Ooh. Okay? Um, for you, what you grew up, grew up with was um, delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you probably hate that phrase. But <laughs> it meant holding off on what you wanted for right now to get something better later. It's like the famous marshmallow experiment they did with uh, the, the little kids. Yeah. And they, they put them in a room with a marshmallow and they said, hey, if you can wait and not eat this marshmallow for the next few minutes, when we come back, we'll give you two marshmallows. And then they filmed the kids. And of course, you know, it was, it was hilarious to watch them, you know, looking at it. Some of them would even lick it and put it back. And, and a good portion of them ate it anyways. Okay. Um, they didn't really display great patience mm. in that study. Mm. But with regards to that, you know, I think we're all like those little kids. So we we right. just, we want what we want and we want it now. Yes. And to put that on hold, delay gratification to, to really just, you know, think about others' needs before our own, that's really important. And it's important for us as believers to do, to recognize God says he will give us everything we need. Therefore, we don't need to worry about it. We need to care for others and their needs and be God's hands and feet to them, mm -hmm. knowing that God will provide for us and our needs. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good right there. I really hope you're listening to this stuff, Craig. This is some good stuff. Well, uh, kind of ironically, we're uh, running out of time here, so patience uh, is something we're gonna have to ask of you right now to experiment with a little bit, but we're gonna try and wrap this up just with a, a few final questions that I really wanna put out. So this was all interpersonal stuff, but patience with God and in circumstances are both important things as well. So can we touch on that really quick? What does it look like? You, you sort of touched on a little bit of playing the long game, right? Mm -hmm. That's patience in circumstances and patience with God, knowing that God has something better for us, right? If we wait, he has those two marshmallows waiting for us, if you will, if we wait. But could you just really quickly touch on patience in situations and circumstances and then um, patience with God in those situations? Okay. Well, patient in situations, first of all, with situations, we need to understand the person we're dealing with, their story. That's where listening comes in. But um, it, it reminds me of a story that Stephen Covey told. He, he had gotten on a flight. He was traveling home. He had like three hours uninterrupted time. He was looking forward to getting on his laptop and doing some work on the flight home. Yeah. And there was two little boys that were being a little bit naughty. They were kind of running around and jumping and doing stuff. And, and he's getting more and more irritated. 
the whole time this is going on, and he's looking around the plane, and he sees a man sitting there, and he realizes this man must be their father. And so he gets up, and you know, he, he walks over to the man, and he says, you know, sir, um, your, your little boys have been just kind of misbehaving, and, and I wonder if you could get them under control, because I really wanted to do some work. And the man looks up at him and kind of has a tear in his eye, and he says, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, sir. You see, their mother is in a casket in the back of the plane, mm. and we're bringing her home to bury her, and I, I guess I'm just a little preoccupied. Mm. Well, Stephen obviously at that point made some hasty apology and, and said, no, I understand, it's okay, and went back to his seat and proceeded to not do any work, but to think about this poor man's situation. And understanding where someone else is coming from is really important because when someone's coming at you and they're being obnoxious or difficult, if you understand where they're coming from, it will help you to, to really you know, realize it's about them and not you. Sure. And, and when it's about them, we can work with that a lot easier. And so, you know, the other thing you said, well, well what about waiting on God? Yeah, yeah. And, and waiting on God is, you know, that's, that's something that a lot of people think about. Like, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just waiting on God. It's like the guy who, you know, they, they drove by his house and they said, the floodwaters are coming, get in the car. And he said, no, I'm waiting on God. And then a boat came by and they said, hey, hop in the boat, the floodwaters are rising. No, I'm waiting on God. And then a helicopter came by while he's on the roof of his house and said, hey, you know, hop in. You got to get out. And he said, no, I'm waiting on God. And then he drowned. <laughs> yes. And, you know, he said, when he got to heaven, God, where were you? He said, look, I sent a car. I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter. Wow. You know, what were you waiting for? <laughs> and, and so waiting on God should be more like you're at the start of a race. You know, your feet are in the blocks. Your hands are on the starting line. Your head is up. And you're waiting with hopeful expectation. That's what you want to be doing with God, is, is waiting on God in that way. It's not just sitting back, but it's you're poised, you're ready to jump at whatever opportunity he sends your way. Good, good. That's some good stuff there, Crave. Hope you've been paying attention. So, well, we, we better wrap things up and, and turn it back over to your champions and leaders. Thank you for being patient with us, um, but really hoping that you can... Th th Speaking of patience and peace with others, I was going to eat that apple. Um, well, Crave, please, please, let's work on peace with others, patience with others, and patience in circumstances. We're going to turn it over to your leaders. They're going to talk about some of this, and they're going to give you some practical tools that we weren't able to get into here to be able to really live out uh, peace with others and, and grow that patience. Because again, remember, this is about the fruit that the Spirit's producing in you. You need God to be able to be at peace with others, to have that patience. So I'm going to turn it over right now, but before we do that, let's pray really quickly. Father God, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for the wisdom of my father here, Steve, um, that he was able to share with all of us. I pray that we we're able to really hear, to really listen. As we go into tribes now, I just ask that tonight you really show all of us how we can live at peace with others, how we can listen well to understand where everybody is at, and that we can learn to have patience with them and then that hopeful expectation of patience on you, that you have something good for us and you're just preparing us. We praise you, Jesus, and in your name we pray, amen and amen. This is a really good apple.